Hello. And welcome to Dev Beard Ops. Um, okay, I think that was a, I, this intro always seems so long to me. <laughs> today was today was extremely long. I was like, well, and and please, <laughs> you, you made it. So I made know, it. I know. This. I know. Come, come, come. <laughs> so I hope you all are enjoying the music at least while it's playing. Um, so there's a reason behind that intro. Uh, the intro is here so we can. Um, so we can actually start broadcasting in all places instead of us just like kicking the go live button and just like hoping we're live. So so yeah, uh, it's just a eventual consistency uh, uh, feature. All right, so welcome to Dev Beard Ops. Um, this is a weekly show where uh, this bald gentleman and this bald gentleman uh, get to talk about the cloud, automation, DevOps, and I guess everything in between. So, uh, and uh, and today we're actually continuing the topic from uh, from the last couple of weeks uh, about GitOps. So we've talked about GitOps, about infrastructure as code, configuration management. We talked about uh, we had a folk, uh, we had somebody from uh, from ha uh, HashiCorp, HashiCorp uh, yeah, last, last week. week as well. So we had a talk about Terraform, which is pretty fun. Um, and today we actually have another guest. Um, and today we're going to be talking about app. We're going to be talking about uh, not enough caffeine. Today we're going to be talking about <laughs> configuration management, <laughs> configuration management, but application configuration management. Mm. We'll get into the details what that is and why should you care about those things in a moment. Um, first of all, I want to say good morning to everybody joining us here. We have somebody from Colorado. We have Southern California. Oh wow! Wow! <laughs> good morning. Uh, good morning, uh, and uh, and welcome everybody. Uh, welcome back. Um, yeah, we, we're happy to see all of the famous, fam well, all the familiar faces here. So, uh, TypeScript Tea Time and Paulsum is back here again. Learning Tea is back here again. So, um, mm -hmm. sh surely they were surely there. So, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, so, you may see that there's a third person here. Um, that person is, well, Steve. Hello. Uh, Steve is also joining us from a faraway land called the East Coast. Uh, so Steve, is Steve, introduce <laughs> yourselves, please. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for having me. My name is Steve Rice. Um, I work at AWS. I'm on the app config team. Um, let's see. I, I, I like to tell people I'm sort of strangely passionate about configuration. I don't think there's a lot of uh, <laughs> folks in the world that love configuration as much as I do. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, configuration. Yeah. Oh yeah. We we will not we brings. will not king shame king shame. That's fine as well, right? <laughs> um, <clears throat> excellent. So Steve is here today with us. He's going to be chatting with us about application configuration management, and he is coming from the app config team, which is also one of the services at AWS that can actually help you with uh, application configuration uh, management. Uh, my name is Darko, by the way, and this is Kobus. Uh, or the other way around, we you you can tell and all. Uh, yeah. So so uh, we are both developer advocates at AWS, and our job is to talk to you, developers, builders, all the folks out there who do wonderful things with the cloud, to kind of maybe sometimes teach you something, sometimes entertain, but ultimately be your voice uh, in AWS. So let's kick it off. Let's kick off with the first question. Um, let me ask you, Kobus. Yes. We talked about configuration management, right? Uh, yep. The way you Getting can configure, going. exactly, configuring your operating system, setting up services, uh, application packages, users, all of the fun things. But when we talk about application configuration management, what does that mean? Pain, suffering, <laughs> production down. <laughs> hey, yeah. Yes. It's basically for any application, there is always a whole bunch of configurations that you have to send to it to, for it to be able to operate. Um, usually, the most basic one that most applications have is some form of database connection because okay. most applications interact with some database. And then often you see, see things like third party API credentials to call out to other APIs to do things, um, maybe some values like how many threads to run or how many, let's say, child processes or worker nodes to run for certain things. There's a whole bunch of things you can configure yeah. an app, which is, it depends on the app itself. But basically these toggles to change the behavior based on what you want it to be, rather than going into the code and every single time, update the code, compile, publish, deploy, that whole cycle, rather just change the configs. Right, exactly. And, um, you know, it's, 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 it's something that I mean. How how is this done, Steve? You are a fan of configuration management. <laughs> how did application? How 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 was traditionally application configuration configuration done? 
with um, customers? Without going into a huge history lesson, I think um, you know back in the olden days, people used to write code and they said, well, I might change this value later. I might, I might not. I'm going to uh, put this into a separate file, but I'm still going to bundle it all together and then deploy my stack. Um, okay. And, um, and that was a very common thing for a long time to, uh, to be able to make a little change. You can just change your configuration file, then you compile everything and you push it out through a CI CD pipeline or you know, even older than that before CI CD, you do a build and, and pray. Right. Um, but you know, things have started to change a little bit to say, well, wait a minute, if this is living in a separate configuration file, then I can maybe deploy it separately. And that's kind of what you're talking about, this dynamic configuration when you're on production. Yes. Um, I can push out my code and then I can push out my configuration separately. I'm in a separate pipeline, uh, more or less. Um, right. And then I can make the changes separately and, and change the behavior of the code by updating a small configuration change. It, it's kind of the same way that we have separated um, application deployments from your configuration deployments of the servers. Or even 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 if you look at it uh, on a lower level, if you look at like... Uh, Deploying infrastructure and deploying configuration on top of that infrastructure, right? So we separated those things, those two things because if a change in a security group uh, is implemented, it doesn't mean that you have to deploy your infrastructure or trigger the de infrastructure deployment again. So um, the same can apply for application applications. Okay. When you have this big old binary that does a thing, you do not bake configuration items inside of that binary. You do not compile in those <laughs> configuration items. Some people do, right? Yes. I, we so. used to. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So some, <laughs> some people do it per environment. I've seen places where you've got the production build, the dev build, and the staging build, and heaven forbid you mix those up because things will go bad. Yeah. So so I'll, I'll admit something. Um, I, I do that on a day-to-day -day basis. But listen to me. Hear me out. Hear me out. It's not what you think. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan of um, Linux window managers, right? So uh, these desktop, it's, they're not even desktop, anymore. it's basically window managers, a typical bare bones way to run Windows, uh, Linux. One of the most popular uh, window managers out there is called DWM. DWM comes from the suckless world of things. They have a bunch of uh, software like their terminal emulators, the, like, their, like their browsers, but whatnot. And they are, their, their, their mantra is like, everything is compiled. If you want to make a change to your application, change the source C code. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so every time I want to make a change to my like my terminal editor, like if I want to change a color, if I want to change the font, I need to recompile it. So, <laughs> and that's not the way you do it. <laughs> that's not you sh something you should be doing in production. Definitely. Right. Right. Well, you could always do a for loop and just compile multiple binaries and then see which one you feel like on the day. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You can flip those things out. But 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 in all seriousness, like in a production environment, if you have an application, uh, you usually do not compile in configuration parameters. And and those configuration parameters can be anything, right? They can be, um, I don't know, the number of outputs this is outputting, uh, uh, I don't know, a, a language you're using for all that here, right? So, so some of those things mm. should not be compiled into the application but we use something called configuration files right it's a it's a text yeah. file sitting somewhere where your server can reach mm -hmm. it and and it's it's just a re really neat way to change those things on the fly mm. i mean one example that a lot of people would hopefully have run into is the the log level in terms of the detail they want from yes. let's say debug versus just all versus whatever and you want to be able to toggle that because you can imagine there's something wrong in production you want to go dig into hey what's going on and you want to yeah. increase the log verbosity but now you're not going to have to do a redeploy to do that wait x number of minutes you just want to be able to switch it on get that log switch it correct. off again and then go and investigate again correct 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 um and, and here's a question to the audience how do you do application configuration? Like in your production application, your development applications, how do you manage those configuration mm. items such as log level outputs, uh, such as, I don't know, uh, language selections or specific output configurations? How do you do that? So please let us know in the chat. Um, so uh, we, we would also like to hear that, those things, right? Um, <laughs> Yeah, so they, we have Dan MBA saying here, compile multiple binaries, uh, use app configuration to point to current selection. Uh, yeah, you can. <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, <coughs> Steli, Steli UK mentions this custom CMDB or configuration management database application. 
Ooh. I remember CMDBs uh, back in the day. Uh, I remember that we use CMDBs for like all configuration management, so including operating system configuration management. Mm -hmm. So um, mm. that's a, that's a really good way to do it. Yeah. yeah. So mm. Satya says oh, chef. chef. Yeah. Uh, Satya, Just, Satya. Yeah. Go ahead. You you can do Chef with for application config because there's yeah. uh, Chef obviously has the ability to manage files and also the content inside Correct. files. So in theory, nothing stops you from doing that. The the challenge, having done this at one point, was that. Because the chef client runs X every whatever interval you set, minutes, let's say yeah. 30 minutes, yeah. you don't have fine grained control of when that is going out. So yes. let's say you're trying to coordinate or whatever, it's like manually SSH onto the box again, and that kind of defies the whole point of having the system in place. Yeah. And yes, I know you can use Knife to do remote access, but yeah, that's, that's preferably <laughs> not. That, that's something that you always trouble me with chef. Like it's a pull method, right? I cannot push a change to the servers unless you do like Knife SSH and something like that, but it's a, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> So yeah, uh, various ways of doing it. So so I, th I think I think this is this is very cool, and I, you know, application configuration management is is great, right? We mentioned some of those things, but um, Steve, w w what other things when it comes to configuration management exist out there? Why people use configuration management? What what kind of configuration settings for applications did you see? Yeah, so um, in talking to some of our customers, we hear about, um, you already covered some of them, a lot of database configuration. That's, that's pretty common. People might want to swap database or put credentials or, you know, those kind of things. Yeah. Um, we also hear about feature flags. Feature that flags. is a word that's um, probably overused because there's, um, I told you I'm passionate about configuration. You can kind of subdivide feature flags into maybe four-ish uh, categories. I can talk about those, but yeah. um, you know, release releasing new code, um, tweaking things. You can uh, put throttling in. It could be a feature flag, but throttling limits is another thing we see quite a bit. Yeah. Um, so that you know, if if things are running hot, you can uh, dial up or dial down um, some of these operational levers. Yeah. Those are common. Um, and uh, we also see allow listing um, as okay. a feature flag or or block listing. Yeah. Um, and so that's sort of, you know, the idea of I want a certain set of users to access something um, or I want to block a certain set of users from accessing something that could be like a, a private API. It could be a new feature. Um, and that that's a really handy thing. Again, to your example, you, you don't want to have to recompile code if you want to add in a new user, uh, yeah. a new beta tester. So so that's those are pretty common use cases. Yeah. But we have a lot of great examples here, right? So we have, you know, a couple of people mentioning that we have Steli saying CMDB, Satya mentioning Chef, we have Phil Zeiss, hey, hey Phil, hello, welcome back, uh, saying Parameter Store, M17 Key, uh, Secret Manager, uh, and also TypeScript T time mentioned environment variables, right? So there's multiple different ways you can manage configuration, right? And I've, I've been using environment variables a lot. Like that's a very simple way to do it. Absolutely. The problem with me with environment variables is like, I need to have them somewhere defined, right? I need to have an overview of my mm. configuration. And it's usually, environment variables are usually just scattered all over the place, right? So centralized yeah. way of doing it is a bit more better, but I think we'll get into that into that in a moment. Um, I was actually um, reading up on a couple of things uh, regarding co application configuration management. And um, one of the things that um, we've never talked about before, but uh, it's I think it's a very valid thing to bring up is silent launches so Ooh, dark launches dark launches yeah so like when you're doing when you're deploying an application right so let's say let's say you're working on on a on a on a big change to your application right and you want to implement new feature x one of the one of the ways you can do it is you can write your code in and just push it and commit it and just go to production and just cross your fingers it works excellent right or you can do something called a dark launch and a dark launch is just a you deploy your code in production, it's all in production, but it's not accessible yet. Imagine if there was a way that you can flip a flag, right? Or a toggle that will enable that feature to your audience, right? To, to, the, to the end users, right? So that's a really great way to, for use of application configuration, configuration management mm -hmm. is that you deploy this new code, you deploy all these new features, but you do not enable them. And the way you enable those new features is with um, with feature flags, right? And feature flags can be implemented in application configuration management. So, so that is a really neat way of doing it. And I read that um, Facebook back in the day. Um, Corpus, do you remember when Facebook introduced Messenger? Um, 
Yep. Yeah. So it, it it was like a big thing, right? You can you can send messages on Facebook, but it was, it was very <laughs> not really good. All we're giving of, away our age. Uh, we're giving away our age. Yeah, uh, back in two thousand and eight, mm-hmm. um, and then Facebook. I think two thousand and nine, two thousand and ten. They introduced the, the the messenger. The thing is, they actually deployed messenger into production, but didn't enable it for all. And what happens is they slowly change the configuration so they, they will enable those things, right? So I think it's just wonderful. I think that feature is is wonderful. And if you look into the into the good book, right, uh, the good old DevOps handbook, one of the reasons you would use uh, feature toggles, you can have rollback safety, right? You deploy a new piece of code, it doesn't work, flip the, flip the switch, toggle it off. Gracefully degrade performance. I think that one of that's one of the features I love the most is that yeah. if a specific part of your application just doesn't work anymore or just broken, it's 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 it's, it's you don't want that to kind of completely uh, ruin your entire application. So that means that you will uh, you will be able to kind of just disable that feature for everybody and they can still continue working on and and also like um, creating a proper service oriented architecture, right? So. Uh, that's one of the ways of doing it. So uh, I, I'm a fan of these things. And, and Cobus actually just pasted uh, pasted in uh, the book, uh, the good book. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If you have not read this book, it's a bit mm. dry, um, at least initially, but it contains so much good information. It's mm. old. It's 2016, but, I think. But Darko, that's good. You want yeah. a book to be dry because you don't want to repeat yourself. <laughs> Fair point. Fair point. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. We didn't warn you. I'm terrible with that jokes. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah. Um, okay. So cool. We have some. We have. Oh, we have uh, Holger here mentioning that he wrote an open source tool for GitOps for secrets nice. management. Excellent, right? So if you're using Parameter Store or in this case Secrets Manager to do a versioning of those secrets, mm. there's more open source uh, tooling in here, right? <clears throat> so yeah. And. Uh, that, that's a very nice segue into the next section we want to talk about is versioning configs. Um, because I think most people probably just apply the, hey, there's a config file somewhere or something, update the value, click a button, push a commit, something, and yep. there you go, that version goes up. And it's always, there is the latest version. It's the same as using Docker latest tags, the one version to rule them all. And there are some issues with that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's problematic, right? And this takes me back to a time where young Naive Zarko would uh, use environment variables, and there was this big connection string in an environment variable. And I got a new connection string, and I deleted the old one, pasted in the new one, and the old one was lost forever. And <laughs> rolling back was a uh, was a uh, was a thing you needed to do. So, um, <laughs> ver- yeah, versioning uh, ver- versioning application um, configuration items is something is very powerful, right? Um, again, mm. safely roll back. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, doing things like that is, is, is very cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we kind of think of configuration like we think of code. It would be foolish to not version your code. Absolutely. Um, I, I, I think it's a little foolish to not version your configuration. Uh, not all customers do it. I think eventually as they sort of mature, they start to see the, the need for that. I guess it's a, like a lot in software. Once something goes wrong once, you say, we got to change things. And, and, and then they decide I should probably look at versioning this thing. Exactly. Exactly. Oh. You know, we talk about GitOps. Like this is part of the GitOps series, whatnot. We we unofficially called it, but uh, one of the primary reasons behind GitOps is that you need to version control things. Version control is the ultimate source of truth. Whatever you're doing inside of your environment, this ultimate source of truth is in oh. your Git repository or whatever version code 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 repository you're using, right? Oh. So, so that is that is the whole point. But I want to I want to talk some about you know the reason we have Steve, Steve here who is from the app config team we definitely want to talk about app config. Um, what, one of the one of the one of the problems I've encountered with even when versioning configuration management, uh, sorry application configuration items is deployments sometimes can be tricky. Right? Mm-hmm. How do you make that change? Right? What do you do? Do you just go ahead and change a file in S3 and just hope all of the things pick it up? Um, uh, what do you do when you roll back, right? How, how, how do you roll back? Do you do it manually, right? Um, so, and I've seen people use Parameter Store. I've seen people use uh, Secrets Manager, um, right? All of those things kind of require you to do some sort of a immediate replacement of that. Mm-hmm. And app config is, well, you know what, Steve, 
what is app config? Yeah, you, <laughs> you're from the app config. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're, you're, you're from the app config team. Why should I say that? Yeah, Tell no, us. no. Um, and, and we do get the question sometimes that's what's, you know, what's the difference between app config and parameter store or secrets manager? Why don't I just put my config in a database or S3? Yeah. And, um, and, and you hit the nail on the head that um, app config is a lot about deploying the configuration. Yeah. Um, so uh, we do have some solutions for storing as well. Um, and, and in fact, we support parameter store as storage. We support S3 as storage. We have our own built-in storage. But, but a lot of it is around the deployment. Um, and so app config helps you to essentially before when you make a change, uh, you can validate the deploy right. config. Sorry, you can validate the config before it's deployed. Yes. Um, and we can talk about that if you want. Uh, there's a couple cool ways to do that. And then the deployment, you can deploy it immediately, which we generally don't recommend unless it's kind of a break glass emergency scenario. Right. Um, or you can deploy it gradually. And um, the gradually can be 10 minutes, it can be 10 days. Um, so uh, I'll say app config is used quite extensively inside of AWS by internal teams, yeah. inside of Amazon really. And, um, and you know, the best practices inside of Amazon are really about slower deployments uh, because you know, let's get it to 1% of our users, then let's measure how, how do things look? Uh, what does CloudTrail look like? What, you know, what does CloudWatch look like? And, uh, and then, okay, we can ramp it up to 2% and then 3% and then 20 and you know, on and on. So um, there's a concept inside of app config that's called deployment strategies that allow you to either uh, quickly uh, or gradually, and then even gradually you can do that linearly, like a linear growth over time, or you can do it exponentially, kind of depending on what your, your DevOps needs are. Yeah. Uh, and, and like I said, it, it, it depends. We have customers that use all types of deployment strategies um, there might be something like uh, a big marketing event. Um, let's say you're doing a big marketing event in Berlin and yeah. you want it at 8 p.m. Berlin time to turn on that feature for Berlin users. Um, and so you can sort of deploy that. You can set that up and time it so that, you know, the, the Berlin users get it right at 8 p.m. Yes. And again, just changing configuration instead of doing a full deployment of code, a lot less risky just to tweak that configuration okay. and you turn on. And so that's kind of like, I want to time it. I want everybody in Berlin to have it all you know, all at once. Yeah. Um, but uh, then you can slowly roll it out across the world. Um, and again, you know, up to you how you want to want to release that. Yeah. The strategy. Yeah. And go ahead, Chris. Yeah. Oh no, no, I was going to say. So um, I've had the discussion around the the why don't I want to just roll it out everywhere? Other than just things might be breaking directly just because you've got a badly configured value. Other yeah. things that come into play here are things like, for example, the load on your database. Because let's say you've now created a new feature that suddenly references multiple different tables as a left out a join. Yes. For two percent of the user base, you won't notice anything. But as soon as you pass the th certain threshold, all of a sudden the DB starts locking up, and then everybody's having a bad time. So that's why this ramping up is important. Because what will happen there is you keep an eye on the error rates. All of a sudden you see database latencies going up, error rates going up, and then you're like, okay, something's definitely not right here. When it crosses the threshold, roll back yeah. to the previous version, and then go figure out what was wrong instead of everybody being down. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And Chath, tell us, are, are you using app config? Have you have you ever checked it out? Right, we we want to so we want to know that if you have actually experimented with AWS app config, is is you you have the person to bother now if it if it doesn't work? <laughs> <laughs> we have, we have yeah. somebody to, we have somebody to yell at here. Uh, so so yeah, do let us know about that. Um, and and you know even for for the people here using like um, Parameter Store and Secrets Manager. You can use that even with with uh, with uh, with AWS app app config, right? So, yeah. app config can use well not secrets manager. It, no, it, it can not use parameter. Yeah. It can use parameter store for the storage of your configuration parameters, mm -hmm. right? And what 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 in essence happens here with this with app config is app config actually helps you deploy those specific changes, right? So, uh, and I, actually, um, one of the feedbacks we got last time is that. Uh, you all want more code, so uh, um, we've actually prepared something. So uh, let me actually let me actually pull up something. Look, I brought my code. You brought your code. Code happy. Yeah. Um, see what that says. Yeah. L let me bring it up. So one of the things that I'm, I'm going to show you right now is that how I can how I've integrated app config with a lambda function. Right. It's it's relatively simple. So first of all, let, let's actually go go on to app config. Let me show you how app config looks like and. How do you do with it? What do you do with it, right? So let's create an application. Uh, call it stream demo. Uh, give it a description. This is 
for that BRD stream. Um, create the application. Now within the application, we have multiple environments, right? So, and Steve, this can, I, I think there's a limit to amount of environments that you can do, but um, what do customers usually use these environments for? Is it like production yeah. and staging? A lot of them use it, yeah, for, you know, an alpha, beta, gamma, prod. Okay. Um, some customers will say, you know, prod North America, prod e, uh, Europe. Um, so it, there, there's a limit of 100, but that's also okay. usable. Um, and uh, if you need more, we can give you more, no problem. Um, and uh, yeah, so however you want to use it, it's essentially a namespace for you it's to um, yeah, manage your config. Wonderful. So let's create a, let's get a, create an environment here. Let's call it prod, prod DE, well, because I'm in Germany, right? Production mm. Germany. Why not? And you can do monitors. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the great features of this thing. So if I decide to deploy a change of a parameter, or sorry, of a configuration item to a specific uh, environment, I can actually uh, add CloudWatch monitors, uh, sorry, CloudWatch alarms here that, that if they're triggered, the rollback can trigger, right? That's the whole point of this. It will monitor if this change is broken potentially is it is it something that i don't want it to be right it can actually roll back i have no cloud watch alarms here so i'm gonna skip that but i create the environment boom now the most important part <laughs> is the actual configuration profile right mm -hmm. and this is where the configuration sits right this is this is your meat and potatoes the core of the things you do right <laughs> so create configuration profile is we're gonna call it um let's say logging config right oh, let's do like that uh, logging configuration and what's wonderful you can actually uh you can actually have the same config uh profile on multiple environments right it's not tied to a single environment so let's say we have our logging configuration set up here and i can attach it to any environment i have and here are your configuration sources and I think this is wonderful, right? So you can define basically your text file here, right? Or your JSON or YAML, uh, depending on which, dev, which version of DevOps you bought. But uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> you can you can actually pick an S3 object. You can do systems manager document. So a document in a systems manager, which is also a valid, valid choice. Your parameter store things uh, and also a code pipeline. Now, I have not seen code... How does this work, uh, Steve? I've not worked with the code pipeline as, yeah, as, we, as this. There's an integration with code pipeline that okay. actually allows you to set um, Bitbucket or GitHub or something for your as the source for your configuration. Okay. And then it puts your configuration through the code pipeline pipeline, and uh, and you can deploy it as a um, uh, you deploy it as an app config uh, deployment. And okay. so some of the similar things. Uh, uh, that you have, but uh, I'd say a little bit more sophistication in terms of you can uh, coordinate and sequence regions. Um, you can do quite a bit with the code pipeline. Right, right. right. Okay. Well, cool. Uh, but okay, then let's let's actually do this thing and let's do JSON, right? So if we do something like uh, uh, JSON should never be written. Beard. Uh, <laughs> Copy paste. True. Right there you go. So that's a configuration item. So that's a that's a toggle in my application. Right. If I go here, uh, I can do some description. Yeah, this is uh, enable beard. Next, uh, here are some validators. validators. Now this is also a powerful part of of uh, um, app config. Right. So it actually is able to validate. Your configuration items, right? Uh, and uh, and is this is this specifically for for hosted configuration items, or you is can it validate, just you can validate all types, all yeah. types? Yeah. So and you can say just you know maybe your JSON schema validation, uh, or if you want to do some, go ahead. Uh, so I was going to say just quick, quick, quickly for the audience, uh, just quick show of hands, who's actually broken, like production or any other environment, just because you made a typo, like literally when you <laughs> entered there was a backslash on the keyboard. Yeah, yeah. it's like. Yeah, and, and this you is you know is... you know. Yeah, <laughs> and, and you know when when things are a little tense, you're talking about the logging verbosity. Well, that's the example here. You know when things are a little tense, it's easy to have that typo, um, and so you want to have a couple of those sort of safety guards in place to uh, yep. protect you. And and yeah, I, I, I can can I talk about these two things? So JSON schema, I think people understand it, it validates the values inside of JSON. Yeah, kind of a simple validation. Uh, the Lambda validation is more complex. It allows you to basically use a Lambda function 
to validate whatever you want. So um, some a use case there is, again, if you have uh, database configuration strings and yes. you want to push out some a new database, you can, before that change is made, you can actually go and with the Lambda function, you can load the database, you can look at a table, you yes. can manipulate some data, you can make sure that the database is actually available before right. you update mm -hmm. uh, that configuration. So, um, you know, again, it, it's a very powerful, it's, yeah. you write the Lambda function yourself, exactly. um, it's a very powerful tool for making sure that you don't accidentally push out some config that's gonna break stuff. I think it's a wonderful sanity ch check for for configuration items, right? Just mm -hmm. make sure that they actually work, that they're valid, and you know you can do a, it's 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 code, right? You can do anything you want in this case with 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 your configuration items, right. validate them in any way you want. So, yep. um, mm -hmm. in this case, I'm going to remove my validators completely because I trust a single parameter. <laughs> Never trust I don't yourself. Know. I don't... Never trust yourself. Mm. Um, yeah. So so yeah, uh, that that's that is very important. And create configuration profile, and that's it. Um, I mean, so go ahead. Before we do it, just a quick question over here um, from uh, TypeScript Tea Time, which is validation at runtime is nice, but it means the app's already broken. And this is exactly what this addresses. Yes. It's that let's catch that bug before, because I know Darker, Correct. you often talk about the the time between making a change or creating co or com committing code to getting that feedback in. Yes. And the shorter, the better. Exactly. You know, it's 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 you, you know that moment when you hit your key. To, to to submit a change to production <gasps> and you realize as your yep as your finger is pressing the key <laughs> that yeah. this will break stuff yeah. um and this will actually prevent some of those things because it it validates the 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 configuration validity before it even reaches any anything mm. right so it's a really nice test for your configuration item, which is also important in GitOps, we say that when you make a change it needs to be validated, it needs to be tested against before it reaches anything. So yeah. this is a really neat way to do that. Yeah. So, okay, so I have this thing here. Um, it's, a, it's a simple uh, configuration item. And if I go to my stream demo here, uh, oh, actually uh, stream demo, yeah. And I can, I can go to uh, my environment and I can go start a deployment. What this will do is I can say, deploy this specific version of configuration. So your, your logging config. This is the version I want of this configuration uh, uh, co uh, configuration to deploy, and these are the deployment strategies. Now, there's a bunch of deployment strategies built in, uh, but you can create your create create uh, create, uh, create them yourself as well, right? So this is a great way because you can do like canary deployments, right? You can have a ten percent of your users um, getting uh, this new thing, and I didn't I think don't think there's a really uh, a way to control it, who gets it, but it's a random ten percent of requests get this configuration item. So basically 10% of your Lambda functions of your application requ um, requests will get this specific new version of the configuration item for the next 20 minutes. And you you can include all of your monitoring in this case just to make sure that it's all working. And if it goes bad, you can actually roll back yeah. immediately the configuration item to something else, right? Darko, um, I can interrupt too. Yeah, you're right that this doesn't, this does um, a deployment across your whole fleet. Yeah. Um, if you do want to target it, generally what our customers will do is they'll create an allow list as configuration as well, so that they can target to specific users. Okay, yeah, that's important. So um, there's a way to do that. Just this is a, this is a, a little bit different. Right, right. Mm -hmm. um, before we continue, I see a lot of new folks joining. Hello and welcome to Dev Beard Ops. Uh, this is a weekly show we do. Uh, this gentleman here and myself and a, and a few other people as well uh, do every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Central European time. Uh, it's a show about the cloud automation, DevOps, and everything in between. Um, today we're talking about AWS. Well, we're actually talking about the application configuration management. And Coincidentally, uh, one of the one of the services at AWS we use is AWS App Config. So uh, right now, what we're doing is actually showing a demo how you can actually build um, App Config and how can you use it. So welcome and uh, yeah, feel free to uh, to let us know if you're using some sort of application configuration management as well. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead. I think I just want to throw in here because I don't think we've ever done this. Just for those who are curious, this is a live stream. We answer questions. This is not pre-recorded. Yeah. Hi. Well, it's not pre-recorded. <laughs> We're not recording. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, yes, yes. So, Kobus, make a cut here, please, so we can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, we we love to do things live. So, uh, uh, yeah, it's um, it's all about, you know, live streams are not about us talking about things. It's also us about talking about with you. So, yeah, uh, we we like to get your uh, your interaction here as well. 
Uh, so I'm gonna ch choose this quick option, which is not recommended in production, but I am, you know, it's a, it's a live stream, so yeah, I need to be quick. Um, and I can also give it like, hey, um, hey, trying things out. Um, just quickly before we go on, just bring that drop. Click it. So go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> I have to it. pull away okay, my mouse. Hit <laughs> <laughs> the drop on you just quickly because there were a couple of terms in there like bake time, those kind of things. So I think we ah. just need to quickly cover what those are, what do okay. they mean, etc. Because there's deployment time, bake time. A percentage. Go. Okay. Steve, go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's two different concepts there, deployment time and bake time. Um, deployment time is the rolling out, uh, you know, across the fleet, as I said. So it's 10%, 10%, 10%, whatever you can figure. Yeah. Um, and then bake time is after everything's rolled out, how long do you want to continue monitoring the application for its health um, through this, through the CloudWatch alarms? Um, and so that the bake time is important if for rollback. So right. generally, you know, I'd say again, depending on the complexity of what you're doing, you know, a few minutes usually know something's going wrong. Ten minutes is a good is a good number too. Uh, but we do have customers using bake time longer than that. Um, so uh, again, it, it, there's some fine grain controls there uh, that allow you to roll out exactly how you want. I do want to point out too. Here's these are some that come with app config. You can go ahead and make your own. You can yeah. customize and, and create your own custom deployment strategy. Exactly. You can, you can change these mm -hmm. to be you know like linear exponential. You can change the step percentage, the deployment time, and the bake time. So all of these are kind of just here so you can increase the safety of deployments. Remember, right. we need safe deployments, right? When you hit yep. that enter button, you don't want to be <gasps> right. Even if you did something bad, it it, it will ca it's potentially uh, able to catch the problems you have. So okay. This, start deployment, boom. So now it's deploying. Because it's quick, the deployment time is zero. It's going to just deploy to all immediately. So the, the flip is going to be immediate. However, the baking time is 10 minutes. So that means within the next 10 minutes, it's going to keep on monitoring the alarms, which we didn't set up. But if there were some alarms, it would keep on monitoring those alarms. And if something went wrong, it would roll back immediately. So, so that's kind of a thing. Now... Fun question. Sorry, fun question now because I do not know this answers, and I hope Steve you do. Is like this is our first config we deployed. What happens with the rollback if it fails? It rolls back immediately. Um, so it'll you know obviously we have it versioned and it'll just uh, redeploy um, the previous version in in all uh, targets. Okay, but I mean in this case we didn't have a version at all. This is our very very first version. So um, it's, I think it, it just fails. Just right? Oh yeah, it just oh, fails. Just... Sorry, I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, for the first okay. one. Yeah, cool. Okay. And and when an app config was first released, like my 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 question was always like, so so where's this deploying deploying to? I didn't tell it a server to deploy to. I didn't give it a, a lambda function or a container to deploy to. Where yeah. does it deploy to? The cloud. It deploys yeah, yeah to the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> it, it it deploys to itself. It basically makes this these options accessible, mm -hmm. right? You are able to now to get these configuration items from app config. That's it. And actually, let me show you how that is done. I have a, I have a little application here that um, um, let me actually trigger it. Uh, so if I do, uh, there's a HTTP. There, huh? It's a super application that basically just spits out a little, little, uh, little stupid quote in English and just some other other additional data, right? So it's an application, nothing special, just it randomly dumps some quote unquote random quotes. Um, if you are coming from the part of the world where I am coming from, you may recognize these quotes a bit later on. Um, so it's nothing special. Let's say I want to I want to introduce a, a, a feature to increase the number of quotes from one to five. Right? I can actually change my lambda function to to uh, to, to to kind of increase the number of quotes, but I, I can also do it with configuration management. So if you look at my lambda function here, it's a simple. Uh, simple Python based Lambda function with all the data inside of it, because that's how you do Lambda functions, I guess. Um, and what it does here, it actually gets the configuration from app config. So it, it uses the AWS SDK to reach out, well, gets the uh, environment variables for the specific configuration, uh, uh, um, configuration uh, app config configuration, and then basically gets those items, right? Gets the items from app config. Then based on the app config uh, items such as the language or the result limit, which is just a number I've set, 
I do something, right? So if, if a, for example, uh, a result limit is one, it will only return one quote. If the language is English, it's going to return the English language uh, quote. If I, for example, um, disable limit results, it's going to be uh, set to two, right? Uh, uh, th these are these are the, the language configuration items also. But here's the thing. There's another thing I have. Chaos. I love this. So um, how to simulate chaos hmm. in your application with config? You can actually enable chaos by enabling the chaos flip uh, switch here by for example randomly right um i'm gonna I'm, i think it's 20 percent of the time i am gonna throw a 500 error here right from this application and this is also a configuration item within app config and to see the exact app config configuration i have it here um configuration profile and the thing is this is actually sitting in systems manager so it's if I go to Systems Manager Parameter Store and go here and look at the Lambda Config Prod, this is my configuration item. Those are the things my application is getting from App Config. So if I want to change this, right? If I want to change from from one uh, from a, from for example from one uh, quote and English to let's say Serbian and five quotes. I can actually go and update this um, parameter store here saying results are going to be five and the language is going to be Serbian and I'm going to save, but it's not deployed yet. This has not been deployed, right? It's not that raw way of deploying things. My application will still get only a single uh, quote and a single, uh, and it's going to be in English. If I go back to app config click on the lambda demo uh, go to the production environment because this is using the production environment start deployment uh, choose the newest version which is now 11 uh, yeah. use the quick way of doing it and start the deployment mm. now my lambda function all of a sudden has the ability to get these new values and here, here's a question from uh, from um, from M17 Kia, right? In a non-Lambda example, how would you listen for this change? You, there's no way to listen for it, right? You need to poll it. That's the thing, right? These things are polled. Um, on Lambda functions, it's easy because every time a Lambda function executes, these things change. But in a, in a, in a server environment, you, you would need to poll for such a thing, right? Uh, I think there's no way to enable SS, SNS notifications on these things, right, um, right. Uh, as of now. So mm -hmm. there is no feature like an SNS notification that will notify everybody that the change has happened. Uh, but for example, if your application, anytime it does something, anytime a user refreshes a page or a user logs in, it will check specific configuration items in app config and pull those things in, right? So, yeah. Mm. So. And I mean, it's also something like when this happens, it's important how to time it because you can imagine, let's say I've got 50 containers running my web server yeah. and now all of a sudden I push a con uh, config change, all of them grab it at the same time, restart the container. You've got this thud of everything going down and coming yeah. back up again. And that's not what yeah. you want. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's, let's actually, let's actually answer a couple more questions here. So mm. from Mohammed, uh, app config can integrate with the systems manager. Yes, it can. Uh, Mohammed, as you've seen here, the, the current parameters I'm passing to my application are all sitting in SSM parameter store and app config is just deploying them. So that is, that is a way to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, question from Lucian. Hey, Lucian. Hi, welcome back. Um, how does automatic rollback impact handle changes to the database, e.g. database, mm. uh, table changes. So there's been a couple of questions. I think over the last couple of episodes, when we talk about deployments and, uh, and impacts to the database, how do you handle databases when making changes? Um, there's two ways of doing it. There's the blue green, which is expensive, right? You have your primary database, flip it to read only, spin up a different database, right? Have that one be the new one in the other environment. And then if something goes back, you need to flip to the old one, but you also need to copy the new new additions to it. It's 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 a mess, right? Um, the other option, uh, which is actually explained in the good book, uh, is, uh, how's it called? Uh, uh, expand and contract. Yes, expand and contract. If you are going to write to the same database, 
add data to new rows, to new tables, right? Do not write and overwrite existing data. Do not mutate existing data, add new data. And if something has happened to your deployment that completely breaks and you have to roll back to the previous version, you still have the old unmutated mm. data and you can just kind of migrate the newly created data into new rows, new whatnot. That's the proper way of doing it. At least one of the two ways <clears> I know. Now, I'm, I'm sure there's other ways, but uh, these are the two ways mm. I know. But I mean, to just quickly dig into that, to give a practical example that most people should be able to follow. Let's say you've got a user table and in there you've got a column for passwords and it's plain text. Please don't yes. do this just as a caveat. <laughs> and you've now realized this is Why? a terrible idea. I, we need to go I fix it. I did that. that. What? You don't what? Wait, I'm not doctor. You're fired. Cheers. <laughs> my um, first project. My first project included the passwords in plain text. Oh yeah. That's, I thought that was the way you do it. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, then it's easy to do a password retrieval. You just send them a mail yeah. with it. Done. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But um, basically, what, what happens then is like, let's say the naive approach is let me go change the code to now have like, let's say, some kind of hashing algorithm in it. Um, yeah. And what I do is I change the code to be able to say, okay, cool. Now when I save a password, hash it. And when I check the password, take the input, hash it, and then do a hash compare, then I write a database script that says, okay, cool, go and update that column. Here's the function to change text into that, flip it all. And now you do this deployment. And you're kind of sitting there hoping like, okay, cool, the DB script runs and the code comes online and one or two logins might fail, you know, but yeah. it should be okay, right? Maybe, hopefully. And then something happens, the database locks up and halfway through half the database is now hashed half, is it? Yes. You're screwed. Yeah, screwed. It's yeah. terrible. Yeah. What you do is like the process Docker described is instead of doing that is first, send out a deploy that creates the new column, nullable yes. saying this is the hashed password. Then what you do is you go and update your code saying, listen, what we're going to do now is there are two columns. Whenever there's a new password update, go and run the hashing algorithm, store the plain text and store the hashed version. Yes. Deploy that, get it out, make sure it works. Then over time, what you do is you start saying, okay, cool, now start having a script that runs through the database, says take it, hash it, store it, which means that's non destructive. It's not the critical path of code yep. at the moment. Until you get to the point where everything's up to date, then you change the code to say, listen, now only look at the new column, but you still don't drop the old column. Yes, Because exactly. guess what? You control back. And then only once you get to the point where you see, listen, that is now fine, remove the code that referenced the old column, push that out, and then mm -hmm. finally, if you need to drop the column. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So so like 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 when you're trans... Kobus talked about this a long time ago. When you're translating, tra when you're moving from a monolith to microservices, the the strangler approach, right? This is similar mm. to that, right? You're you're adding new things. You're not removing existing things, and slowly but surely, the new things will overcome the old ones. So and the same goes for a database mm. as well. So mm -hmm. thank you for all the questions. Uh, and uh, mm. Steve, uh, we have Holger here mentioning that. Event bridge would be great for this. A PFR, right? Um, <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. So yeah, it's a, it's a great feature request. I think yeah. I think I think that would be amazing if you can if if mm. if systems manager sorry if if app config can throw a notification into event bridge that this has happened. Something else can pick it up, right? No right. need to pull things all yep. the time. Absolutely. Yes. PFR. There you go. So excellent. <laughs> uh, so so let's actually have a look at, at what this is currently in the baking phase. Mm, baking. Um, so, <laughs> uh, four minutes he, left. Bake. To finish. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, the, the 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 it's accessible now. Even if it though isn't baking, it's now now it's listening to problems. There will be no problems because there's no, nothing to check for problems. But <laughs> <laughs> the best way to exactly the best way to avoid problems is not even to look for problems. Right. <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah. Um, so so. My application now has the new version. So if I would do this right now, I should get five uh, quotes in Serbian this time, or Serb or Croatian. So this is this is basically the change has been applied. I didn't make any changes to my application. The code is exactly the same. I have not modified anything from from my application. Nothing. I've just pushed the change to app config, and now when it mm. when my, my when my lambda function runs, the query the the the, the configuration items it receives. Are new, and based on on those things, it can actually just well get me something new here. That's it. That's nice. wonderful, right? Again, and if this was broken, if I would do stop deployment right now, it's gonna roll back to the old version, right? So like, this was bad. Uh, we <laughs> Koba said like, what are you doing? No, stop. Um, and and um, and I just click the whole uh, roll back button, and it's gonna basically gonna be roll back. Do this. And we're back. Boom, boom. Simple as yeah. that, right? Mm. Builder PFR is product feature request. So PFRs are the things you come 
tell us, right? Hey, hey, code this in Oracle. We would love to have this feature on Service X. And then we go ahead and to say, Steve, hey, Steve, hi, uh, listen, um, <laughs> we have people <laughs> asking for this. Uh, <laughs> could you please put this on your list? So, yeah, yeah no, we love, we love those. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're super important to get all that feedback. And I, trust mm -hmm. me, they, they are the biggest priority that we have. So. Exactly. So, so there you go. So now, if for example, I have multiple environments, I could have easily told my Lambda function that you know, uh, instead of listening for the production for production version, uh, oops, let me go. Up, 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 there you go. Uh, the environment is instead of just using this one, use the staging environment or whatever environment, whatever the, my app config configuration is, and also which configuration item are we pulling in. So all of these things are weirdly enough as environment variables, but you can actually define them within the script, uh, the, the the Lambda function itself. So so it is it is it is pretty cool. Um, there's also this thing, the client ID. This is used for um, a bunch of other things because this is being passed back to uh, app config. So when we talk about um, when we talk about uh, canary deployments, right, your twenty percent. If the same client ID keeps coming back, it will not get a different result, right? Different configuration item, right? If you have a client ID, if you have a process, if you have a, a state machine doing something, right? It would be super weird that one, like 20% of your Lambda functions in that state machine would do something different, right? So if you have a client ID, you pass something through it, it can actually use that to make sure you get the proper mm. proper value. So, so yeah. Well, it could um, be some fun chaos engineering. Okay, we, exactly. You, you exactly. Could 20 percent right so 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 if i would do if i would do, let, let me actually try this uh, we have some time so let me go back to uh parameter store let me enable chaos so if i go here and uh, i should also i should also change this using through code but i don't i apologize um i love that we're talking about GitOps and you see me here clicking a lot um <laughs> chaos is true all right save uh, boom app config let's deploy it once more uh, Lambda demo, Lambda prod, start deployment, 12, boom, uh, all at once, start. I should just have been renamed to YOLO. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> YOLO. <laughs> now it's deploying and, uh, okay, it's baking. So now if I would be running my application in 20% in of the time, I should be getting a 500 error. There you go. The monkey yeah. is in the oh. tank. There you go. Once more, <laughs> monkeys in the tank. It's twenty percent. There you go. One, it works now. Um, it doesn't work now. That's more than twenty percent, but it's it's tw it's twenty percent. It's random. It's 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 random is hard. Yeah, the, the the percentage here is not being done by by app config. It's actually done by my lambda function. That's so, not in um, your code. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. So so yeah. Um, we have a couple of comments here. So uh, from. Um, El Reciferado de la Grieta. Uh, there you go. Uh, wow. I kind of want to integrate this with my configuration library to allow data binding and hot reloading. Would it also be cool mm. to use it uh, at work, to be honest, and give it a try? Check it yeah. out, right? Um, so is there a universal acronym for this? Uh, oh, RFE. Did we use RFEs? No, PFRs, Product Feature Request. PFRs. That's the one we use, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so if you have some, uh, like... Um, Mr. or Mrs. El Resfriado de la Grieta, let us know if you have a feature request for this. Uh, we would always like to pass it on to folks, folks such as Steve here, um, yeah. uh, to kind of make the feature, make the services better, better, better. Okay, yeah, kind of an important thing. You know, you talk about hot reloading, and it's. Um, I think the sweet spot for app config is are these dynamic configurations. Yes. Not necessarily things that are loaded at init, but you know things that, or you know, when the containers spun up. Um, you can do that, but uh, but it's the the runtime stuff that uh, yeah. it, it's really handy for. Exactly. I just want to put something in the chat. So here's the link to to uh, to Werner's blog. B uh, Werner Werner Vogels, our CTO, uh, wrote uh, a blog post about continuous configuration, and there's a lot of examples regarding using app, app config. I would definitely advise you to check it out. It's a wonderful read. So it's it's technical. It's all those things. So if you're interested in a bit more on this, check that blog post out. Um, so, so I, th I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a really good wrap up point for this entire uh, episode or this entire discussion, right? So, um, uh, okay. So, what did we do today? What did we talk about today? We talked about code? application configuration code. Yeah, of course. Uh, we talked about application configuration management, about uh, how you actually uh, manage your application configuration. Do you do you compile it in? Do you use a text file? 
on the on the file system where your application is running? Do you request it from parameter store or from um, an S3 bucket? How do you deploy it? So we've actually seen um, seen information. We've seen the way to deploy this code using AWS App Config, which is just a wonderful service to help you manage your application configuration and deployments. And those configuration items can be anywhere. It can be in S3. It can be in in uh, in uh, um, parameter, store, store. parameter store documents and all of the different kind of kind of places it can also be oh did the stream stop is it bad oh i'm looking at it yeah um we should be good wrong, but continue I'll, okay i'll look into it yeah yeah okay okay good good so uh you didn't miss much we're actually just uh, wrapping up what we're doing so uh mm. um but yeah so Check out AppConfig, right? Check up AppConfig if you are interested in doing proper application configuration management. Again, there's a lot of other tools out there, but uh, AppConfig is very much integrated within AWS and how it works with AWS services. So if you're if you're a Lambda user, there's even a Lambda extension for AppConfig, so you don't even need to do the fancy SDK stuff I've done here. Um, oh. I've just showed you the SDK stuff because that's how you'd approach it from any application anywhere, right? Even if it was running on your workstation, it's it's a it's an API endpoint somewhere out there where you reach to. Steve, any closing thoughts? Uh, I am just, as I said, I'm really passionate about configuration. I love hearing how people use it. Um, so thank you for doing this. This is, you know, opened up uh, some thinking on uh, for the team, and uh, this, is, this is awesome. Good, yeah. And and for for if you have like regarding app config or any other service at AWS, if you have a feature request. If you have something that you would love to be implemented, and you can tell us why, because uh, usually some people are like, oh, I would like to have this. Why? Uh, I think it's cool. Uh, so let us know. Uh, we are also always happy to share the information with folks such as Steve and other people from other service teams as well. And uh, yeah, um, and with that, I think uh, we can br bring this to the end. Yes, are we... we've got 60 seconds left. We have 60 seconds <laughs> left. So uh, <laughs> for a quick horror story, I worked at a place where we would take the bytecode from Java, seeing as there's a Java comment, compile it, take the byte stream, put that in the database, and that is how you hot loaded plugins. You would literally deserialize and send it directly to the JVM and then version it and change things out like that. Yeah. Don't do that. Our good, work, our, but... our good buddy Richard Boyd. So if you know Richard Boyd is a developer advocate at AWS, he did a demo with App Config, I think a couple of months back, where he loaded <laughs> application code into App Config and he would just read it <laughs> on the function. <laughs> You can do that. You can load your entire mm -hmm. Lambda function mm -hmm. from App Config. Yeah. Should you do that? That's a different question. Uh, so yeah, uh, cool. thank you all for joining us. Uh, yeah, next week at the same time, same place. We'll see you all there. Steve, thank you very much for joining. It's Thanks been a pleasure. Much. With that, bye bye. Adios.